I'm Jack and welcome back because I am here to give you guys a full season review on Stargirl Season 2. It just came to a close a few days ago and I'm going to give you guys a spoiler review for it. So if you haven't seen the season yet, watch it first and then come back here. And don't forget to follow me on social media. My username is down below in the description below and on the bottom of the screen. So don't forget to do that while you're at it. And with that said, let's get started. Season 2 follows Courtney Whitmore, aka Stargirl, as she and her JSA allies continue to protect Blue Valley from threats who want to cause harm. Meanwhile, as the summer progresses, dark things happen as they come face to face with the menacing Eclipso and the Shade. I really enjoyed season one of Stargirl. I was very surprised by it and I loved it a lot. I loved the characters. I loved the fun, the lighthearted moments, the action, the visuals and the characters. And ever since the pilot came out, which I had no expectation for beforehand, I was blown away. I absolutely enjoyed the first season as a whole. And I was really curious to see how is season two going to continue with these characters. And I was really curious to see how would they top it in any shape or form. And because now they have officially moved over to the CW for season two. And it is safe to say season two is another terrific season of the show. It does very different things from season one, which I really appreciated. And it made things more unique, different. And it feels very much like a very proper continuation of that first season. To kick off the positives, I thought I loved the dark tone of the season. Because season one was so lighthearted and fresh and fun and all that, this season decides to really go into a much more darker and horror direction. And because it makes sense with characters like Eclipso as the main antagonist. And I thought I really enjoyed it. This usually with the network, I don't think sometimes some of the horror stuff they do on the other shows are hit or miss. But with this season, it hits, it delivers. I watched the season continue and sit there in awe of just how well that was when it comes to horror and how terrifying scenes were throughout the season to give you the idea of how dangerous of a threat Eclipso is. And what makes that even better is the fact that this season is a lot more character driven than plot driven. Like you do have the overall plot. But I loved how this season they focus on the characters and each character has an arc like Courtney, who's in summer school and she has to deal with wanting con to continue to be Stargirl. And then you have Yolanda, who's still dealing with the fallout of season one where she killed Brainwave. And then you have Rick, who's let Sam and Grundy go and he's trying to just come to terms with that. And then Beth, who lost Chuck the in the goggles for dr midnight last season so each character had a story and it progresses in different ways throughout the season and i really enjoyed what they did some character stuff worked a little bit better than others or were used a lot more than others but i really enjoyed the character work and it was elevated because i really liked the dark tone of this season and it does a really good job at distinguishing being different from that very first season because of how fun and lighthearted that was so this season did a really good job at deciding to take the season to a much different and darker direction and it paid off tremendously next up i really liked the visual effects just like in season one and because it's now a cw exclusive show I was wondering what season two was going to be like in comparison. And thankfully, still looks great. The set pieces are awesome. Even Stripe and the visual effects for Johnny Thunder, Eclipso, and all these characters. It looks great. It looks just as good as they did in the first season. And yeah, visuals are really great overall. And that is really welcoming to see for this new season, especially as COVID made it harder for the visual effects artists to do their things. And so to see that they've pulled it off, just it really pays off. And I give them tremendous respect for working this hard to great give us really great visuals for this season of the show. Another thing I want to point out is the acting. It's still fantastic in the first season. I really liked the cast and crew. I liked Breck Bassinger as Stargirl 
and Yvette Monreal as Yolanda and just Luke Wilson as Pat. Just everybody is great this season. And I like that they really get to show out, show their range because of how much darker the season is. And there's a lot more emotional character moments that happen throughout the season than opposed to what we saw in the first season. And they were great. Especially Eclipso, who, and he played Captain Boomerang for a few episodes on Arrow and The Flash back in the day. And I really liked him as Eclipso because he was haunting, he was menacing, he delivered a very chilling performance, and he was a great antagonist to our characters in the state. And I really dug that. And I really liked the new characters as well, especially Jade who is the daughter Green Lantern. It's been a while since we've seen a new Green Lantern character, so I really enjoyed what we got of her this season, and especially Jakeem and Johnny Thunder, which I really appreciate. They were fun to watch, especially to kind of lighten the mood for this season, and I really liked seeing just these characters off in this direction with where they're at with the whole summer school thing and how they want to continue being superheroes, and just the ongoing threat of Eclipso and just the darkness of it all. It's all done really well. Character work is just as strong here as they are in the first season, and the acting is still terrific. One thing I gotta say here is I really like the flashback episodes and how it really does tie into this main story, because with the flashbacks, you'll have Pat and the JSA, where you see Joel McHale as Starman, and you have Dr. Midnight, and you got John Wesley's ship as Jay Garrick back on the show for the, who, this is his first appearance, by the way, on the show. And you see how they encountered Eclipso, and how that was a very dark time for them, because then they had to come to terms with the fact that they have to kill the host in order to stop Eclipso. And you see the fallout and how that really affects them permanently. And so I liked how that ties into modern day with these new characters and how they try to stop Eclipso because they just unleashed him upon Blue Valley. And, well, Cindy did this, but <laughs> there's that. So it's just like seeing them have to deal with Eclipso and they're only teenagers and they're not quite as used to their abilities and all that as the older JSA um, it was really cool seeing them try to handle how do they stop Eclipso because you have Yolanda who's still traumatized from what she did with Brainwave at the end of season one. And so that really just has such a huge hold over her over the course of the season that you see how she's still trying to process what happened. And even with Rick as like he let Solomon Grundy go instead of killing him at the end of season one and you see how him and with Eclipso and just all that Eclipso just pulling on their fears like I love how he tries to dismantle the JSA one by one because it makes Stargirl have to be more reliant on her trying to do the job and get it done because you have Beth off on her own Yolanda has left at some point and then Rick is in prison which was a shocker and so it was really interesting to just see how they try to take down this villain because of how powerful he is and how dark he is. And they truly made him a worthy foe who's not easy to beat necessarily. And so I really liked how it also made Eclipso a much, a very cunning foe as well. He's sure he's a monster, but he is an intelligent one at that because he did successfully break up the JSA for a time. The dramatic moments are done very well this season, especially in episode 11 where Stargirl is trapped in the afterlife and she had some scenes with Cindy that were very well done and especially not just those scenes, but even with Yolanda in that one episode that's about her where she's just struggling from what happened with Brainwave and how she sees just th things were happening to her and how she's reacting to it. That was great. She was fantastic in that episode. And even throughout the episode afterwards with Rick, where that was a whole Rick episode, and just seeing how he's trying to deal with the fact that his, his step, his uncle is not necessarily a great person and all. 
and see how he handles, tries to handle the whole Salman Grundy thing and that beatdown he had in the end. There's just a lot of great dramatic scenes this season. And they are done so well because some of the other shows recently, they used to do it well. But then at times I feel like they're a little more too dramatic. But with this show, it's done right. It's done well. It doesn't drag. It feels right. And it's done well. And even though it is a dark season, there are some fun moments to be had, especially with that one episode when Sportsmaster and Tigers, they broke out of jail and it was like, oh, they're out of jail. What are they going to do? And it was a fun episode. There are still some great entertaining moments to be had, just like in the first season, especially with other characters like Johnny Thunder, where Mike unleashed him and... You have that whole episode where he's in control of him, weird stuff happens and all that. So there's still a lot of fun to be had with season two, despite it being a dark season in comparison in tone. But when we have fun moments, they are fun. The Shade is also a very interesting character because when you first meet him, you know he was a former ISA member and how he starts off like he's probably a threat to the JSA and you see how powerful he is you know that he is dangerous. And then I liked how as the season progressed, you see he's not entirely a villain because it's like he mentioned, he doesn't have much to relate to with the ISA. He's not a full-on villain, even though he did work with them. But I liked how as the season progresses, you see he be has a very prominent role in the whole Eclipso storyline and the dark stuff and all that. And he's an interesting character, and I really liked how they used him because the actor who played him did a great job at portraying this kind of character. And I liked his scenes with even um, Luke Wilson's Pat and Stargirl in the JSA, and even with Amy Smart's character. And so, really like the shade. He's a very interesting character. And I'm really curious to see what they're going to do with him in season three, considering how he sticks around at the end. Even though there are not a lot of action sequences this season in comparison to season one, whenever we had action sequences here, they're awesome. I really liked episode six, probably maybe my favorite episode of the season. Um, I loved seeing the action sequence between the JSA and the new ISA led by Cindy and they fight in the cafeteria and it all comes to a head when the shade shows up and then Eclipso shows up and then things go crazy, things get wild and it was intense, very intense stuff that happened there and I really dug the action sequences throughout, even the finale, there's a lot of great action sequences in the finale, whether it's Stripe versus Eclipso, or Stargirl them versus Eclipso, or just Wildcat being her, doing her thing. A lot of great stuff. And the choreography still looks great, and they're still shot well. And even visually, they look well. Season two, just like season one, is also very well written. Season one did a really good job with pacing and characters and to make sure there's no filler. And season two does just that as well. The characters are written very well. They don't do very out of character things. And it's also paced very well because I remembered when the season two premiere came out and then it's like all of a sudden we're already moving so far to the story with each episode that we don't feel like things are slowing down. Everything just progresses the story. Everything has a part to play. Every character has a storyline that ties into Eclipso and it's done it's executed very well. And there are some things that I think could have been a lot better or just could have been removed, but they're kind of minor things compared to the whole overall story and writing. So there is that. It's a very it's a well-written season, just like the first season. And I hope season three keeps that up. The finale of Stargirl season two is awesome. The action sequences, like I mentioned before, are great. The visuals are awesome. Just seeing all of these characters come together to take down Eclipso is just really cool. And seeing Eclipso possess Stargirl was insane. Just seeing that happen and seeing how she's 
very tough when Eclipso possessed her and seeing how Wildcat and Cindy react to it and how they try to save her and such. And it was really cool. And all of it comes to a head once Joel McHale's Starman finally shows up. He grabs onto the staff and helps free Stargirl and stop Eclipso. And then you find out it's like, finally, from the season one cliffhanger, Starman finally enters Blue Valley and he finally meets up with these characters and that was really cool and then you have the final like that one moment where they just defeated eclipso and all the characters from the shade to the jsa to the parents to johnny and joaquin to jay and all that just seeing them together oh and cindy too seeing them just in a group shot as they finally defeat eclipso is awesome it did a really great job at wrapping up the storyline of the season and it was just really cool to finally see all these characters all together in one frame as they just saved blue valley once again and then we had something return to king did and that was you had multiple different endings for one you had rick in the shade and how rick buries salman grundy but then the shade decides he's gonna stick around then you have jade and then you have Stargirl. And then you just, you have so many endings in the finale. And it's awesome, actually, because they all, it's a character driven season and they each have different storylines that all still tie into one another. And so that was cool. And it was kind of crazy how it ended where the Crocs have moved in next door. And it's like, how are they, how is this going to happen? How, how will this work out in season three? So that I'm really looking forward to. And the ending. I think the villain's name is Mr. Bones. And it turns out he might be the villain of season three because the new Green Lantern, Jade, is trying to look for her brother. And it looks like Mr. Bones is going to have a role in this. So yeah, really looking forward to season three, which is going to be called Stargirl Frenemies, just like how this season is called Stargirl uh, Summer School. So really looking forward to seeing what they have in season three set so, and then i gotta move on to my issues with the season and the first thing that comes to mind is i felt like joel McHale was underutilized because it, it just comes down more to this so in the very end of season one the very last scene you have joel McHale as sylvester and he goes to what used to be um pat's old apartment and where Stargirl and her mom once lived. And then he reveals his identity to that landowner. And then that was it. Giving you a tease that he will have a big role in the season. Apparently that didn't happen. And I wonder why. Because it just feels weird that throughout season two, you don't have very much of him. And it's just like, what was that cliffhanger for? And then he finally shows up in the finale with these main characters. When it sounds, turns out. He wants to mentor Stargirl into being a better hero. So that was a bit wasted for me because I thought he was going to have a big role this season. I don't know if COVID had a reason to do with it or if just because there was too much happening and they didn't want to add Starman into it already. But yeah, it left me a little bit bummed because I expected after season one that he was going to have this really big role in the season. And while well, he did show up for a few episodes, he didn't do as much as I hoped he would. And then my second issue is, while I did like what they did with this character, I felt like, compared to some of the other JSA members, I felt like Rick was underutilized. Because you got, of course, a lot of screen screen time with Stargirl. And then Yolanda had a lot of um, story as well, and even with Beth. But with Rick, it felt like he didn't have as much to do. And you don't have him with the main characters all that much. And... I wonder why exactly, because I do know his story ties into with Salman Grundy and just all that, but he didn't have as much focus this season as he did in that first season. And it kind of bummed me out also because I really like him on the show. And so seeing him not get as much screen time in season two and just kind of not get as much time with his story as the other few characters left me a little bit disappointed. Even though I liked what we saw of him, it was just, I kind of wanted more of Rick. And then when it comes to new, okay. 
And then my third and possibly final issue I have with the season is some of the new characters didn't get as much screen time as well, especially Johnny Thunder from The Pen and Jade. I really liked Jade. And then after episode two, she was gone and you don't see her again to like the final four episodes. And I was wondering why is that exactly? Because I really liked what I saw of her and I would have liked more. And then Johnny, he was one of the more lighthearted aspects of the season. So I really enjoyed him. But he also wasn't in the season for as much. And it, it does make sense. But for some of the newer characters, I wish I got more of some of these newer characters because they were interesting and I think they could have had more development than what they were given. Maybe season three is going to do that for them, but we'll just have to wait and see. So overall, season two is another great season of the show. I don't think it's as good as the first season, but it's still, it's a very dark season in comparison. Lots of great horror moments that really amped up character development and character dramatic moments and all that and with great action sequences and a great story and antagonist season two of star girl delivers once again i'm going to give star girl season two summer school an a minus and if you are a fan of the show and you love dc you should definitely watch the season Season two is another great season of the show. It's still one of my favorite DC comic shows at the moment. So if you haven't seen it yet, yeah, definitely go check it out. You should be able to watch it on the CW, even on HBO Max, I think. So definitely check it out. Season two, not quite as good as the first season, but still a really strong season with a lot of great moments and great stories. So definitely go check it out if you can. And I'm really looking forward to season three next year. So those are my thoughts on Stargirl Summer School. What did you think about this season? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And I would also love to hear how excited are you for season three and what do you want to see about it? So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button and stay tuned for more. We're in danger. Everything's falling apart. Shade, there's bad news. We're going to stop you. Stay out of my way.